Gig internet is pretty sweet. I actually recently got it. I got fiber internet and I am in love. Yes, I've got gig speeds. That's a thousand megabits per second upload and a thousand megabits per second download. It's a lot, but is it for everybody? Is it really worth the money? Well, today we're gonna look at that. We're gonna look at the speeds your devices actually use, not the speeds that show up on the box or the speed that you found on whatever blog post. I'm gonna show you through an app that I've got with my Eero Wi-Fi system, how much speed these devices are actually using so that you'll have a better idea of whether you need those gig speeds or whether you can make do with something a little cheaper. So let's dive in. All right, thanks for joining me today, everybody. If you enjoy what we do here at reviews.org, and if this video is helpful to you, go ahead and give it a like. I would really appreciate that at the end of the video and uh, subscribe as well so you can keep up with us here at reviews.org. All right, first off, let's talk about download speed and how much you'll need to do what you do online. And to illustrate that, I'm using my Eero app. So Eero is an Amazon branded uh, Wi-Fi system. I've got a mesh system uh, that I use. And so I've got a few Eero devices on here. And if I click in, I can see as I am doing various activities on my computer, on my phone, on my gaming devices, I can see how much speed they're taking up. So if we talk about normal browsing, you're browsing the web, you're reading the New York Times or whatever, you're not going to suck up a ton of data doing that. Uh, regular social media consumption, you know, Twitter, not gonna use a ton of data and thus you don't need all that much speed. But then you get into things like Facebook and Instagram and they wanna serve up as much video as possible. And so you are gonna see a little bit more data consumption there. And so you need a little bit higher speed. Still, most modern connections are gonna handle that with absolutely no problem. I mean, these were things that we were doing on 3G and you know, things have progressed a bit since then. So you don't need a ton, but yeah, if you've got a bunch of devices that are Marco Poloing or TikToking or whatever it is that they do these days, yeah, you're gonna need a little bit more speed to do that than you would the old style of just text walls all the time on the internet. Now, gaming is an interesting one because it's got this reputation of the faster the better. Oh, you've got fiber internet, you must be the ultimate gamer because you've got a thousand megabits per second download and upload, right? Well, gaming actually doesn't take that much data. Yes, you are interacting, so you are using download and upload, but on average, most games and most gaming will only take about three megabits per second download and one megabit per second upload. So let's see how that compares here on the app. All right, the next one here is smart home devices. If you think to yourself, all right, I've got a million smart home devices. They're all hooked into the Wi-Fi. That's, I, I need all the speed in the world. Well, yes and no. Again, what it comes down to is video. If you have got a bunch of security cameras, doorbell cameras, whatever else, using video for your smart home setup, then yeah, those will take a little bit more speed than normal. Most smart home devices though are dormant most of the time. So if I pop into the app here and I look at the light bulbs that I have here in the studio, I have 10 different light bulbs. They're all hooked up to my Alexa so I can tell her to do something. Oh, I don't wanna tell her to do something right now. Not yet, okay. So if I go into my connected devices, I'm gonna pick a light bulb here and say, turn on the studio lights. And you can see that barely registers. So those devices, you think, okay, I have 10 light bulbs in here that are all hooked into Wi-Fi, but they're dormant most of the time. They're not using any data. They're not sucking up any speed. And then when you do activate it, Alexa takes up, you know, what is it? A few kilobits per second of data and then uh, the light bulbs even less. So if you are using video equipment, security cameras, doorbell cameras, like I said, that's when you might start seeing a, a lot more speed requirement. You can count on about five megabits per second to transfer data from a security camera, either upload speed or download speed, depending on what you're trying to do with it 
count on five megabits per second. But even if you have a ton of security cameras, if you have something approaching the average connection, let's say 50 megabits per second download and 10 megabits per second upload speed on your uh, you know, cable connection, for instance, then yeah, you should be able to handle that just fine if you've got one or two security cameras and you're looking into those every once in a while. All right, the big culprit is streaming. Like I said, it's all about video. And this is what we're all doing these days, right? Is we're streaming our TV, at least those of us who have cut the cord, uh, and even those of us who haven't are still probably streaming quite a bit. So on paper, here's Netflix's numbers. For standard definition streaming, you need three megabits per second download speed. If you want HD streaming, you need five megabits per second. And if you want to stream in 4K, you need 25 megabits per second. That's quite a bit. So let's see how that compares on the app here. All right, so I'm gonna go into my app here. I'm gonna turn on Netflix uh, right behind the camera and see if that makes this spike on my app. All right, so it's firing up. We're gonna let it run just long enough to avoid the, the uh, sensors on YouTube. All right, so now it's yeah 30 megabits per second is it gonna get any bigger 45 all right 53 is it gonna climb any higher yeah okay so 53 and what it's doing there is it's trying to create that uh that buffer where you know you don't have to continually download uh but you'll see it jump and there it's sitting at 25 megabits per second dropping down to 13 as we've created that buffer uh, so yeah, looks like that's pretty accurate. So yeah, that should give you an idea of what your normal activities look like. Now, back to the idea of fiber internet and symmetrical upload and download speed. So what that means is that on most connections, cable, DSL, satellite, that sort of thing, you're gonna have greater download speeds than you will upload speeds. So I was recently on an Xfinity connection, a cable connection, and I got 300 megabits per second download speed and 10 megabits per second upload speed. And when I upgraded to fiber internet, I got symmetrical gig speeds. So a thousand megabits per second down and a thousand up. Uh, and so the question is, do you really need that? Do you need the upload speed to be that fast? In a word, no, no, you don't. You probably don't. Now I can only think of one category of consumer who's going to consistently need a really robust upload speed. If you can think of more, by all means, hit the comments below. But all that I can think of is content creators like myself, especially if you're creating video, then upload speeds are going to be important to you. It's not even just about uploading data onto the web for consumers. So when I finish this video and I upload it onto YouTube, it's going to you know go very quickly because I've got great upload speeds but it's also about backing up data to the cloud. If you do a ton of that, then upload speeds are going to matter. So Adam, who's editing this video right now, he backs up a ton of data, terabytes worth of data to the cloud on a monthly basis. And uh, that is going to be valuable to have those upload speeds uh, up to snuff for that. I guess maybe another category would be if you have a really, really robust home security system. Like I said earlier, if you have a lot of different cameras and you're live monitoring them simultaneously, maybe upload speed would matter to you uh, in that case, but I'm confident that's not going to be most of us. So unless you are a content creator who's working with a lot of video files, or maybe you are doing simultaneous streams often, you know, you're hosting streams, then maybe that upload speed will matter. For most of us, probably not so much. Okay, so now the question, let's get back to the question at hand. Do you need gig internet or even anything approaching it? If you don't need it, why is it even available? Why do people pay for it? Well, it's all about the buffer zone, as I call it. It's probably not the best word because that makes you think of the scrolling wheel on Netflix, but maybe it, is, maybe it does work there. <laughs> so the thing about the buffer zone is if you need 50 megabits per second to run two simultaneous 4K streams, then on paper at least, you can just go sign up for a 50 megabit per second plan, which would be way cheaper than gig internet, right? You can get 50 megabits per second for a pretty low price these days, but maybe you're hitting the evening bottleneck. You're trying to watch shows during the evening and you're on a cable connection that's sharing a trunk line with everybody in the neighborhood. So when they all get on, 
everything slows down. Maybe that's the case for you. So those numbers, like I said, are smaller than we thought, but they do add up. So if you've got two people watching 4K Netflix streams, uh, but they're also kind of scrolling through Instagram and they're only watching both with one eye, you know, whatever, all that stuff adds up, all the phones, all the tablets, all the game systems. So while you only technically need 50 megabits per second to run two 4K streams, if you never want to see any buffering and you want to watch that sweet, sweet 4K TV at any time of the day, you'd probably want at least to think twice about that 50 megabits per second. And you'd probably want to up that. To play it safe, you go with twice that amount. Or, you know, hey, if you're getting gig internet, then it's 20 times that amount. So yeah, I haven't seen a buffering wheel in years. It's great. So the question here is, should you get gig speed? Um, maybe, maybe. You can almost certainly get away without it. You can probably do something a little bit cheaper. And who knows, I may be downgrading here if I find that I'm not using it to its potential and I wanna save a few bucks every month. But I'll be honest, being able to upload a four gig YouTube video in about a minute, it's pretty sweet. So let me know what you think. Hit the comments below. Tell me what your take is on this subject. I'd love to hear from you on whether you think it's worth it and how many devices you have simultaneously using internet speed in your home. Uh, yeah, hit those comments. On your way down, give this video a like if it was helpful to you and subscribe for more videos like this. And I will see you all next time.